Perhaps you, like me, may be wondering how many Africans were really taken to the Americas during the slave trade between 1501 and 1866. The most comprehensive analysis of shipping records over the course of the slave trade is the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, edited by Professors David Altus and David Richardson. Though the editors admitted that their figures are estimates, I believe that they are the best estimates available in the field of the study of the slave trade. Remember that we are talking about 300 years ago when there was no computer database to store the figures for easy retrieval. Before we reveal the year-to-year data covering the 300 years of the slave trade, it is important to quickly touch on why the Europeans enslaved Africans in the first place. Firstly, ivory, gold, and other trade resources attracted Europeans to West Africa. As Britain acquired more colonies in America and the Caribbean, so demand for enslaved Africans to cultivate and harvest tobacco, rice, sugar, and other plantation crops. So, the European traders generally relied on a network of African rulers and traders to capture and bring enslaved Africans from various coastal regions to the New World. In this video, our focus is to bring into perspective the sheer number of slaves that were transported over the period. We will also reveal the number that left the shores of Africa and how many successfully landed alive in the New World. We will also point to which tribes and countries that the slaves came from. Just a gentle reminder to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We would highly appreciate that. The actual number of slaves who embarked on ships in Africa and disembarked in the Americas from 1501 to 1866 could never be accurate because there was no centralized record keeping then. According to the record on the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, between 1525 and 1866, 12.5 million Africans were shipped to the New World. Out of the 12.5 million, only 10.7 million survived the dreaded Middle Passage, disembarking in North America, the Caribbean, and South America. It means that roughly 1.8 million did not survive the journey. The human cost of the illicit trade was quite enormous. The transatlantic slave trade was a part of the triangular trade route between Europe, Africa, and the Americas between the 16th and 19th centuries. In practice, European merchants brought manufactured products to Africa to trade for slaves. Then they will transport the slaves to the Americas to harvest raw materials, and then take these materials back to Europe to be consumed while using the rest in manufacturing. Slavery became an important part of funding the European empires of old that is today modern Europe. How many of these 10.7 million Africans were shipped directly to North America? Sadly, only about 388,000 were shipped directly to America. You heard me right. Such a tiny percentage. And I will explain. An overwhelming percentage of the African slaves were shipped directly to the Caribbean and South America. Brazil received 4.86 million Africans alone. Some scholars estimate that another 60,000 to 70,000 Africans ended up in the United States after touching down in the Caribbean first so that would bring the total to approximately 450,000 Africans who arrived in the United States over the course of the slave trade. Like the triangular trade, the slave journey was also broken into three parts. The first passage was capturing the slaves from their villages and transporting them to various African ports along the Atlantic coastline. The middle passage is the journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Then the final passage was where the slaves were transported to their place of work. Strangely, it is believed that the death toll of the first passage is the highest of the three stages. It is believed that in the process of capture and abduction of the slaves through wars and conquests, millions were killed or fatally wounded. However, a lack of historical data and documented evidence makes it difficult to estimate accurate numbers. In contrast, about 14.5% of slaves did not survive the Middle Passage's journey according to shipping records. The cause of high mortality in this phase is because of the harsh and cramped conditions on board the ships. The slave ships were built to fit the maximum number of slaves on board in order to maximize profits. Following that was an easy spread of diseases, such as smallpox and dysentery. Malnutrition and thirst caused further deaths. Mostly traders did their utmost to keep the slaves healthy in order to make profits, as they are seen as commodities. Though there are countless examples of mistreatment, 
and punishment of slaves by their captors, many slaves were exterminated by the crew as provisions ran low. The arrival of the European in the Americas brought with it the virgin soil epidemics which decimated the indigenous populations. However, the abundance of natural resources and lack of available labor led to the rise of the transatlantic slave trade. Until the mid-1600s, Portuguese traders had a near monopoly on this trade. From available figures, in the early beginning between 1501 and 1566, 96,970 slaves left the African coast of the Atlantic Ocean in slave ships. Only 68,000 of them landed in the New World and the rest 29,000 of them nearly a third perished in the ocean. Perhaps in the early years, the merchants lacked the necessary experience which later grew in the next 100 years of slave trading. For the next century from 1567 to 1666, a total of 1.2 million slaves left Africa in slave ships, and 885,997 of them made it alive to the Americas while 239,693 of the slaves died on the Atlantic Ocean. When compared with the first out 60 years, one could see that the mortality in the Middle Passage reduced. However, the trade picked up sharply between 1667 and 1766 when 4,583,162 slaves were transported to America of which 3,870,717 arrived in the New World while 712,445 slaves died on the journey. The transatlantic slave trade reached its peak between 1750 and 1850 and an average of 74,000 slaves were brought to the Americas each year. The largest decline came as the slave trade was disrupted during the American War of Independence from 1775 to 1783. Although the trade became weakened as the abolitionist movement gained momentum in Europe and the Americas around the turn of the century. The most significant impact came as the slave trade was abolished in Britain and the U.S. in 1807 and Brazil in 1831. Britain later used its position as the global superpower to impose abolition on other nations and used the Royal Navy to enforce these measures. While most nations abolished the slave trade in the early 1800s, it would take decades before the actual practice of slavery would be abolished. Today, slavery is illegal in almost every country, however modern slavery in the forms of forced labor, human trafficking and sexual exploitation continues to be prevalent across the globe. The slave trade had devastating effects on Africa. The pay for warlords and tribes to engage in the slave trade created lawlessness and violence on an alarming scale. Depopulation and continuing fear of captivity made economic and agricultural development almost impossible in the West African region. A large percentage of the people taken captive in Africa were women in their childbearing years and young men who normally would have been starting families. The European slavers did not take the elderly, disabled, or otherwise dependent groups who were least able to contribute to the hard work in the plantations. The transatlantic slave trade generated great wealth for many individuals, companies, and countries. However, the brutal trafficking of human beings and the large number of resultant deaths eventually engendered well-organized opposition to the trade. So, in 1807 the British abolished the slave trade in Britain and passed another law in 1833 that freed enslaved people in British colonies. Of those Africans who arrived in the United States, nearly half came from two regions, Senegambia, comprising Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and Mali. Then from West Central Africa, including what is now Angola, Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Gabon. The Gambia River running from the Atlantic into Africa, was a key waterway for the slave trade. At its height, about one out of every six West African enslaved people came from this area. In addition to the nearly 50% of the total number of enslaved Africans in the United States from these two regions, a good number had their origins in the West African nations of Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Cameroon. If you've enjoyed this video watch also, the next videos on your screen. Do leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel for more informative video content on Africa.